What's up everybody? Good late afternoon or early evening for some of you. We finally have another Seahawks injury report. Just came out a couple minutes ago and we're starting to get a better idea of the kind of team we might have on Monday night. So let's go ahead and jump right in courtesy of Bob Condota on Twitter. Let's take a look here. So it's a little bit better this uh, this day. It's a little bit better today. It's a little different, though, and there is some bad news here for sure, but also steps in the right direction overall. So, did not participate in practice. We had six, which, hey, trending in the right direction. However, if you're not going to participate in a practice on Friday, I feel like your odds of playing are now below 50%. It, it, unless it's a rest thing or a precautionary thing, it's probably bad news. So DNPs included Artie Burns, who is new. Yesterday he was limited. Today he didn't participate at all. So that's concerning. Trey Brown, Kobe Bryant, Draymond Jones, Charles Cross, and Derek Hall. So Artie Burns, like I just said, that one's the most alarming, I think, because we actually kind of need him for our nickel corner spot. And if he can't go and Trey Brown can't go and Kobe Bryant can't go, you're probably looking at a situation where you just have to stick Julian Love there and hope he doesn't get hurt. And by the way, Julian Love is working through his own issues right now. And if he can't go, then you're looking at like uh, Jarek Reed. So right away, we have a little bit of a problem here. There's a uh, issue at the nickel corner spot with none of these three cornerbacks practicing at all today. And I don't expect Trey Brown to play at all. Um, he's in concussion protocol it would be shocking to me if he played. So I'm already kind of counting him out. I counted him out yesterday. So to me, this is a uh, going to become a thing. Now, I don't know if Trey Brown was going to play nickel for us anyway. Very possible that we didn't look at him as a nickel corner. He might just be an outside corner to us. But um, uh, it would have been nice to have. And Kobe Bryant, of course, we know has played some nickel for us. And uh, he's missing practice again today. So I think that's probably a negative sign seriously doubt he plays. So we got some issues in the secondary already. The good news is I think we have enough to get through one game, but uh, this bye week came at a really good time, let's just say that. Uh, Draymond Jones also did not practice, so his odds of playing kind of plummet here, and I know Draymond's not playing amazing so far this year, but we need him. We need all of our defensive linemen. Like, losing Mike Morris to that injury, I know Mike Morris wasn't a guy we were leaning on to have some monster season, but we needed those snaps, man. And now Draymond Jones out. It's like, do we even have enough guys to field a real defensive line? So I'm a little bit alarmed by that. I don't like that. I uh, I don't know what, what the uh, status is with him, but I have to say, based off the information that we have, it looks like he's not playing. And we need his body out there. We need his, even if... I know some Seahawks fans are starting to wonder if maybe he's just not all that good. Maybe he's overrated. Maybe he uh, was a contract year guy in Denver. But even if those things are true, which I don't, I don't agree with, but even if it's true, we need him out there because we have a shortage of guys down in the trenches. We're already doing these two-man fronts anyway to kind of disguise it, and that's with Draymond. Uh, Charles Cross didn't participate, so I'm thinking he doesn't play. Uh, Carroll sounded pretty optimistic about him earlier this week, I know, but I feel like if he was going to play on Monday, he would have practiced by now, so I don't think we're going to have Cross. Now, we've already proven we can have success without Cross out there, so that that should not really be an excuse, but make no mistake, we're better off, we're a better team with Cross. I see some people already starting to buzz around this idea of, oh, well, maybe Forsyth is better than Cross, or maybe we're a better team with Forsyth out there. No. Absolutely not. No. But we can win without him, so if we got to hold him out another week and then he gets the bye week, then that's actually probably the right play there. So no problems there. Derek Hall is another new addition to the DNP list. This one's also kind of uh, concerning. Although we did get some good news in the edge department room, I'll get to a little bit later in this video. So if he can't go, if something happened to him in practice, if if there's something flaring up there... It's not necessarily the end of the world. I would definitely like to have him out there. I don't know what's going on here. This isn't a veteran rest day because he's not a veteran, so that makes me think something happened. But um, 
we can definitely survive without him for a week. All right, limited participants now. And we got some good news here. If a player is limited um, on the second day of the weekly practice report, then that's a reasonable indication they're going to play, especially if they were DNP the day before. So limited participation included Will Disley, who I've talked about this already. He's been having a really nice year, so we need him out there. He's a big part of what we're doing right now, especially with the situation at tackle. So another day of limited participation, good sign. Julian Love, another day of limited participation. Expect him to play. And whatever you think of Julian Love, we need the guy right now. We need him. If for nothing else, we just need the help at nickel corner. I know Jamal's theoretically coming back, and that's awesome, but we're going to need some help at nickel corner, and Julian Love is our, probably our best option remaining. Quandre Diggs bumped up from the DNP list to the LP list, so you got to expect that he's on track to play now. And look, I know Diggs is off to a bad start, but trust me, in the offseason, when we spent that pick on Devin Witherspoon and we signed Julian Love, the thought was at some point this season, we're going to have the Adams, Diggs, Love, Woolen, Witherspoon secondary, and that secondary is just going to wreck people. So I want Diggs out there to be a part of that. I'm not thinking that we have anybody else on this team that's going to be better than Diggs. I know Jarek Reed is an intriguing player, but I'm not there yet. Uh, Phil Haynes limited, which is a great sign. He did not practice on Thursday, so he's trending towards being able to play. New addition to the LP list was Evan Brown with a quadricep, but the fact that he didn't DNP, the fact that he was an LP, tells me that he's going to play. Maybe he's a little bit physically limited beneath what he would like to be, but... I don't think this is going to keep him out of the game. All right, full participants. We had quite a few. Jamal Adams, again, so looking good there. Reek Woolen, full, looking good there. DK Metcalf, full participant. Never really was worried about him not being able to play in this game, so this is every this is a pretty strong indicator that he will play, so awesome stuff there. Uh, Jaron Reed, full participant, which is a big relief, especially with Draymond. Jaron Reed might need to play way more than we want to play him in this game. Jaron Reed might have to go 50-plus snaps, and I hate it, but the fact that he's able to participate in practice fully today is a very good sign. So, awesome stuff there. Breathe a sigh of relief. It looks like we're going to get Jaron Reed. We're also looking like we're going to get Uchenna Nwosu. So, there was a little bit of an alarm bell on Thursday, but now we're good. And Daryl Taylor, who I was who I was actually concerned about. I wasn't that concerned about Nwosu. I thought Nwosu was probably fine. Taylor, on the other hand, I was like, what's going on there? Um, both these guys being full goes today is a great development. I I know that I know that Daryl Taylor obviously isn't off to a great start this year, and he's a very polarizing player in the Seahawks fan base, I think, but if Derek Hall can't go, we need these guys. We need Nwosu, Mafe, and Taylor at the very least because right now we don't have a fifth edge on the roster. Maybe we can call one up, but we need these guys to go. Anybody we call up is not going to be some great player anyway. So uh, that's the rundown of the Friday injury report. This is trending in a pretty good direction. My biggest concern right now would be the Draymond situation. If Draymond's out... Then you've got Jaron Reed and Mario Edwards as your top two defensive linemen. And then rotating in for them, you would have Cam Young and Miles Adams. And then maybe you call up Jacob Sykes. It, it's ugly. So other than that, I think things are at least headed in the right direction. So that's good. Uh, giant side of things, not nearly as long, but maybe equally significant. We had a very notable DNP today at Giants camp. Andrew Thomas did not practice. Wow. So, Dable said that it was not a setback. He received treatment inside instead of practicing. But the fact that he couldn't practice at all, where yesterday at the very least he was able to practice some, that's a cause for concern. And that Giants offensive line has had big problems so far this year. They've been one of the worst offensive lines in the league, and a big reason why is Andrew Thomas hasn't played that much. If Andrew Thomas cannot play on Monday night, then that offensive line is just fixing, just absolutely fixing to get bowled over. 
So this is big, people. We're going to keep an eye on this tomorrow. Um, obviously, the extra day is probably going to help them get him out there, but the fact that he's kind of backsliding, theoretically, I, I know they didn't call it a setback, but back, but the fact that he's backsliding to where he's not practicing at all, that's got to be a cause for alarm. Uh, everything else on this injury report is probably not different than yesterday. Bellinger, limited, but sounds like he'll play. Davidson, elbow, sounds like he'll play. Ojulari, limited. I don't know what's going on there, but I would, if I had to guess, I'd say he plays. Saquon was limited, but if they play Saquon, that must just be a indication that they believe this game is must win. But honestly, if Saquon is going to be so limited like this, like he literally had a high ankle sprain two week, 15 days before that game. If he takes the field 15 days removed from a high ankle sprain, and as the Hawks Nest said the other day, high ankle sprains used high ankle sprains used to be called broken legs. Like they used to not even differentiate there. So if Saquon goes out there, what's he even going to be able to do? So I don't even know if I should be that concerned about that. All right, I'll see you guys later. That's your injury report for today. Trending the right way, but still some hurdles we got to clear. Going to find out more tomorrow. See you guys later. Go Hawks.